Hi there again everyone, this is Laura back with Successful Spirit Summit Online Training's mini course and we are at Module 2. Thanks for sticking with me and tuning in for a second day here. If you missed Module 1, that was basically all about how to do cross promotions and cross promotions gained me a ton of print ads in the Los Angeles Times. Totally recommend you check that link out if you've missed it and have a look at that. I think you'll find it enjoyable. Here in Module 2, in Video 2, we're going to be talking about how to get 25,000 emails about your business for free. Of course, what this title actually reflects is one specific instance of how this has happened for me, but I'm going to give you a ton of other examples that it's happened for me too. I'm going to start off again by telling you a little story about the first time I had this kind of thing happen, and then I'm going to break down exactly how this happens and how you can replicate the process again in your own business. I'm really, really fond of talking about this particular business strategy because it involves looking after not only your own business but serving nonprofits and doing an immense amount of good with nonprofit partners as as a part of your business strategy and that means raising funds for nonprofits and all of this cool stuff but the cool thing that was so enlightening to me when I started doing this was that in order to help a nonprofit that I loved and wanted to help make money or raise funds or raise awareness or get new members, I didn't actually have to give them a big fat check. I didn't have a big fat check to give, so that worked for me. This is the story about how I made a nonprofit a ton of great connections and several thousand dollars in our first year without actually writing a check for anything. In fact, all I did was I donated some passes. So I'm going to talk to you about how that happened. So when I was first starting out the Flagstaff Yoga Festival, the first year, I had gotten to the point where, I think I told you in the first video, we had this great event lined up and then I really figured out I needed to publicize the event. Um, and so I went about that in a few different ways. The Los Angeles Times story I told you in the last video was one of them. That worked out incredibly well. The other thing that I started to do that first year was reach out to nonprofits because what I figured out was that nonprofits actually had large membership bases. And if I could figure out a way to help a nonprofit out, maybe the reciprocation or the cross promotion there would be in some form or another getting some of the nonprofits to tell people about me, at least to thank Flagstaff Yoga Festival for donating or helping them out or something. And I thought, well, that's a great way to market myself because not only, you know, is it an extensive reach that I can get a hold of here, but I'm doing a lot of good in the process. I'm helping out some great causes. So I started approaching people and I, I worked with several nonprofits our first year. One of the nonprofits we worked with was the Sierra Club's Grand Canyon chapter. Now, the Grand Canyon chapter of the Sierra Club, that's a little bit of a, um, an interesting name for this group because it isn't actually just the Grand Canyon. Um, they kind of nickname their state's um, chapters. So this Grand Canyon chapter of the Sierra Club was actually all of the regional Sierra Club membership in Arizona. And that's who we ended up working with. I sat down with um, one of the um, people who worked for them in our area at the time was Stacy Hamburg. She doesn't work for them anymore. She's up in Tahoe now. Hi, Stacy. And um, anyway, Stacy and I sat down and we just started to brainstorm basically ways that we could help each other out. And I was very upfront with her and said basically, hey, look. I don't have any money up front and running this festival is kind of leaving me a little cash strapped here, but I guess I've got some passes I could donate. And she's like, oh, would you? That's so awesome. We've got these events coming up and there's this silent auction at this events for, I, it's, I forget the name of the, the fund. I, I, I donate money to her every year now. It's like to bring, um, I think it was Mexican Grey Wolves back to the Grand Canyon. They've got a little um, nonprofit that works with Sierra Club that does that and so she hooked me up with them and we put some passes into their silent auction. At that point a real light bulb went on for me and I thought well hang on a second what I have just done essentially is I have created awesome people to be on the festival list and awesome people to connect my presenters and exhibitors with because I think about this anyone who went to this fundraising event paid money to go to the fundraising event and then they paid money again to bid on the tickets for the Flagstaff Yoga Festival, right? And then they came to the Flagstaff Yoga Festival. 
So they paid money for these tickets. They, they're wonderful candidates for yoga presenters and exhibitors because these are guys that have just proven to me that they are um, ideal buyers for my presenters and exhibitors. They've already raised their hand, paid money to come to a weekend yoga event in Flagstaff. Right? So the likelihood of them doing that again is pretty high. So they're, they're a great prospect for everyone I was working with. The fact that they didn't pay me that money, that they paid Sierra Club that money, didn't really phase me. It was only a couple of tickets, right? Um, but Sierra Club, obviously, um, and their, their Wolf Project, they, they gained some funds from that, right? Whatever that person bid on those tickets was cash in hand for Sierra Club. So they were essentially really grateful. We ended up donating to a few other silent auctions and events um, that, that Stacy hooked me up with that year that Sierra Club was supporting. And that's how we raised them some money. I think that first year I ended up donating something like $6,000 worth of tickets to them. I don't know how much money they made on all of that, um, but that, that's the amount of the donation. And, and that was just a great thing all around. It didn't really faze me that they, again, that I wasn't making money off those tickets because Again, I'm dealing with, I have space for a thousand attendants, right? So it really wasn't anything off my back to bring more attendants in and serve a nonprofit. In fact, it was to my benefit because then those attendants are now on my email list. So a lot of them will come back a second year or a lot of them start hanging out and taking classes with my presenters or whatever. They're good people to have at the event. So that was a cool benefit for me. But in addition to that, what Sierra Club did is they gave us some shout outs about the Flagstaff Yoga Festival. They listed us in their newsletter. They listed us... They, they listed us on their web page. They hung posters for us all over the valley that year. They did all of this incredible outreach. But the real icing on the cake for me was when I connected a few other dots, and I'll tell you about that now. So in addition to donating tickets to the silent auctions and helping them raise funds that way, I also started playing that year with a, a type of software called affiliate software. We're going to talk a lot more about affiliate software in subsequent trainings, all about joint venturing and getting other people to market for you, which is essentially what affiliate software is for. Let me tell you essentially what it is. And the real genius here is, is when we connect that affiliate software possibility with serving nonprofits. That is when the game changes, the lights go on, and you're really going to get excited about this, I promise. So the idea behind affiliate software is it's basically a tracking mechanism. Affiliate software you can plug into place to give someone or an organization or a person a dedicated, specific to them link to your website or to your sales page or whatever online. Um, so for instance, I'm working with it this year um, with my friend Chris. Hi Chris. And we're getting Chris some affiliate links so that he can drive his own traffic from his own sources to us at some of our events and trainings and promotions. And when Chris does this, when he shares our website with his dedicated link to his leads, to his traffic, to his email list, to his Facebook fans, whoever, and they come visit us, if at any point those leads from Chris make a purchase from us, we have it set up so that Chris earns a little commission on that. And that is like a really groovy thing, right? Because it helps Chris out and it helps us out too. So everyone is growing their businesses together and everyone's happy. Now, the, the compensation amount that you determine to put into your affiliate software to make this work is totally, you know, it's totally up to you what, you what you feel like is a good percentage for you to give. Don't give more than you can. I mean, there's I've seen all sorts of percentages down from like 2% with like national nonprofits for digital products that are going to be sold to like hundreds of thousands of people all the way through to, you know, like... 5% or 10% on a book sale or a DVD sale or 25% to 50% on information marketing products that get sold exclusively to a higher end list but don't actually have any baseline costs that are you know really 
but the baseline costs on them are sort of negligible because there's no physical product. So I've seen anything from two to, well, actually on some forums like ClickBank, there's 75% commissions or 100% commissions on some stuff. But, you know, you, you determine what feels comfortable for you. Most of the time what I do, what I have set up is 50% splits with my affiliates. So they are equally as invested in promoting me as I am promoting them and vice versa so that truly it becomes this abundant economy where everyone raises themselves up together. Of course, a nonprofit, they don't usually work with this kind of stuff very much, and it's kind of a new concept, but it, I think it worked for Sierra Club to give that a go because, um, it, you know, in, in this economy, so many nonprofits are struggling with the old models, the old ways of doing business. Remember in video one where I said that really the... Um, it was, you know, not in your best interest to go with something creative and wacky to a large company like Los Angeles Times because they were going to blow you off. That really is not the case with nonprofits. A lot of the time, they are really into creative, wacky new ideas because they need something new that's going to work. They're willing to try all sorts of things these days. So if you have a creative, wacky proposition like, uh, let's use affiliate software to raise money for your nonprofit and I'll do business too. They're, they're probably more likely to listen to you today than they ever have been. That's at least has been my experience. So affiliate software, again, many different uses for that. This is just one um, that I came up with. We're going to go more into detail about affiliate software and other possibilities with it in some more trainings. We're going to do more about joint venturing like I'm doing with Chris in a later video in this mini-series that we're doing for you. And we're going to be doing a ton of detail about affiliate software and marketing and everything that it can really do for you um, way more in detail at Successful Spirit Summit and on the Successful Spirit online trainings that we're going to be putting up for you guys for sh shortly here. So let's get back to the nonprofit and all of the different ways that we can benefit the nonprofit. I'm just going to go down bullet fashion real quick a few different things that you should be thinking about if you're thinking about working with nonprofits. We're just going to kind of list the process there of approaching and negotiating with a nonprofit and what that looks like generally so that you can start thinking about how to do that for your own business. So here we go. There's really about five things that I want to mention for you. The first thing that we really need to talk to is that you you really need to find the right nonprofit to work with. Now, whether you want to get exposure through that nonprofit for your business through doing things like I did with silent auctions and then putting up posters for you in Phoenix and things like that, or whether you want to go more like with the affiliate marketing model and have them send out a ton of emails for you. Um, or whether you want like backlinks from their website, that's another good strategy that we'll go into a little bit here that can really benefit you um, and something called SEO, search engine optimization, which we have another training on you for, you for here. Whatever you want the benefit to be for you, you need to make sure you're working with the right nonprofit. Make sure that their demographic is something that's really fitting and complementary to who you are trying to reach as a business. So for instance, say if you're doing like um, yoga for the heart and for a healthy heart, go team up with the American Heart Association in your neighborhood, right? Or yoga for cancer survivors, who do you think you'd team up with there? You know, take the words out of my mouth, right? The American Cancer Society. Um, so there's all sorts of right nonprofits for your group. Perhaps you're looking at putting on a retreat in the wilderness and leading people like on a meditation retreat, but you want to do it in a really beautiful area so that people also um, have an appreciation for nature. Perhaps Sierra Club or Outward Bound or something would be a great um, nonprofit for you to team up with. But you see the parallel there, guys, between like finding the right nonprofit with the right demographic for you so that when they do say, hey, we can give you some reach or you suggest that as the trade, it's actually going to benefit you too. And that way you're doing good for the nonprofit and you're doing good as a business. Both of those things really can coexist. Finding the right nonprofit, that's number one.